here it is the micro four thirds fd speed booster let's take a look all right here's the box the speed booster came in lots of foam lots of protection comes from hong kong took two days for mine to reach here um, here's the adapter itself. Now the adapter comes with front and rear caps and the first thing I noticed picking up the adapter was the weight. I mean this thing is, is built like a tank. Compared to the MMF3, I mean the MMF3 is a feather. Um, you know a standard FD to micro four thirds mount adapter. I mean this, you know, this one here is all metal but I'll say the speed boost is probably at least twice as heavy as this. I mean the speed boost is built really well. Now, mounting the speed booster on an FD lens, I don't know if this is all FD lenses. I noticed it with my 85mm here and the 135mm. It's not the easiest. You have to line it up perfectly. There really is no room for error. And you can't get one side on and then shimmy it on. You have to get all sides of the circle on perfectly and then push it down and then... Oh, there we go. Then you lock it in place. And oh, that's another thing. This this lock switch for the FD mount, you know, on this adapter, you, it's really easy to, you know, move it on accident. And if it's set to open, your aperture changes won't take place. That always annoyed me. I would think that I'm stopped down, and in reality, nothing happened, and I'm really shooting wide open. This, I mean, you're not going to move this on accident. Once this is set to on, I mean, this is it's solid in place. You know this mounted on the lens i mean it's it feels like it's part of the lens it doesn't even feel like an adapter it's built to the same quality as as this lens performance wise there's no compromise i mean i'm gonna do a in-depth review later on this is more of an unboxing first impressions but just from using this lens and the adapter for about a week on the em5 i mean all areas have improved image sharpness is noticeably higher color fringing is noticeably less i have a wider field of view you know, this is a 1.2, so I'm getting around 0 0.8, 0 0.9 with this setup. I mean, there really is no compromise at all. There's just not many things in the photographic world that have zero compromise. I think this is one of them. Uh, the only thing that people may have a gripe about is corner performance. It's really not that bad. I mean, I shoot a lot of my, you know, photos off center anyways. And, you know, I haven't noticed any degrading of quality that's unacceptable. You know, it's, it's, I mean, in my opinion, it's a no compromise. If you have FD glass and you have a micro four thirds camera, this is a no brainer. There is one issue though with mounting this. So here I have the OMD EM5. Uh, mounting this on the EM5 is no problem. I mean, there it is. I mean, it's a beautiful setup. I mean, it looks like this lens was built for this camera or maybe the other way around, but no problem mounting on the EM5. Mounting on the EM1, that's another story. And it's a very disappointing story because if anyone has used the EM5 and used the EM1, manual focusing on the EM1 is a lot easier. All right, here we are. Here's the EM1. I'm recording with the EM5 now. So we recording with the EM1 earlier. Here's the speed booster and the 85 millimeters. So let me see if I can show you what the problem is. So once you have the lens mount inside of the camera, you see the top of the lens mount or the top of the adapter, you see a little prism hump on the EM1, you know, it's hitting it. It can't go in anymore. And it, you know, this isn't, it's not in enough right now to screw the mount or screw the lens into place. So, I mean, that makes it literally impossible to mount the speed booster on the EM1 unless you were to shave this down, which isn't an option for most people, at least not for me. Um, you know, this is very disappointing. Obviously, Metabones, it looks like the, the EM1 wasn't out at the time this was in development. So, you know, they they probably didn't know it wouldn't fit. Olympus, I'm surprised that this is lower than on the EM5, considering this is made to take bigger lenses, like the lenses from the, you know, the Legacy 4 3rd system. But, I mean, this is very disappointing. Manually focusing on the EM1 is a lot easier than on the EM5 because the EFV is bigger and also image stabilization is automatically kicked in when you're in magnification mode. So it's disappointing that I can't use it. I hope Metabones comes out with a, you know, another version. Um, until then, anyone who's looking at the Speed Booster FD mount um, and you have an EM1, beware. You're either going to have to shave this down or I guess you can shave this down somehow. I don't I don't know how that would work, but as is it doesn't work. So 
just be aware of that and hopefully Metabones you know they'll come up with a second version and maybe you know Olympus and the four thirds system needs to make some standards as to you know the size of the adapters and you know how they fit on the mounts and just so manufacturers are aware so that things like this don't happen very unfortunate and that's it for my first impressions unboxing for the Metabone Speed Booster FD to Micro Four Thirds. I'm going to do an in-depth review later on, um, see how it performs on all of my FD glass. Um, I'm also going to upload some of the photos that I took over the past week with the 85mm 1.2. All of them were shot wide open. Um, I'm going to upload them to Flickr. I'll put a link in the description. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments. And if you want to see more videos, subscribe. I'll see you later.